Welcome to another episode of Apostles, Elders of GMS. And uh, this is a slideshow that we have put together uh, depicting events that happened on Saturday, beginning with Elder Apostle Tahar and uh, myself, and I'm here with Apostle Elder Ramlab, and um, we took a trip to the Metropolitan Museum, and we took some pictures from the artifacts located in that museum, and we have put together a slideshow for you brothers to uh, go into some of the history behind those artifacts that we saw at the museum. And uh, hopefully you brothers will uh, um, be enlightened by this uh, slideshow. And um, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. All right, so the first slide is, um, as you can see, the Metropolitan Museum. And it's located in New York City. Uh, I believe around, what is it, 80? 80, 83rd and 5th. 83rd and 5th. And it's a very, um, <clears throat> I think, <clears throat> if I do remember correctly, I think it was first erected in uh, 1870 or 1872, if the research I did is correct. And pretty much it houses artifacts of different empires from all over the world. And uh, it's very important that you brothers go to places like this, the museum, because there is some hidden truth in there. A lot of the artifacts in the museum is pretty much designed to promote so-called white supremacy, as we'll see in this uh, slide presentation. But every now and then you'll see an artifact in there that will, um, that will uh, uh, tell, the tell the truth. Yeah, the water. <laughs> exactly, tell the truth. So um, when we first came into uh, the museum, the first artifact we saw, the first uh, statue, if you will, as you're looking at it here, was this statue here. Now, I didn't get to take a picture of the plaque of this uh, statue, but it, I believe it said lady. it was a lady of a noble family. And uh, what she is the first? Holding, she was holding a scroll in her hand. Right, right. What's the first thing you uh, notice here, on on uh, in this picture here? Her nose is broken off. Right. Now you you heard um, uh, you heard uh, Apostle Ramla mention she was holding a scroll in her hand, which that scroll represent the scriptures, right? Or the or the yeah, truth. Like a, like a, a position of, of, of nobility, you know. Which mm. you know, of course, is scriptures and and uh, you know, I guess papers uh, stating you know or, or showing her nobility. Okay. You know. When we were um, from, I don't know if you remember what era. Um, this was in I believe it was the 1400s uh, during the, around the area of uh, Constantinople, I believe it was, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And uh, beginning with Elder Tar, we were speculating that she might have been a Jake. Yeah. And our, our strongest reasoning was the fact that her nose was uh, uh, chipped off, yep. as you can see here clearly. Uh, also, um, we uh, made mention about the Benefactor's Wall. And uh, what it is, is when you go into the museum, as you go up the stairs, there's a wall with numerable, uh, uh, trying to get the word out, amount of names written on the wall and these were names uh, of uh, individuals throughout the years that have donated uh, monies. mostly monies yeah to this uh, museum and when you check out those names they're real prominent in the world of Esau you know yep. uh, names like uh, I believe the uh, Rockefeller yeah they was in I believe they was in there um, I'm not sure if the Carnegie name was in there but a lot of those prominent names of those uh, international banking families mm -hmm. 
were in there and I think Asta the name Asta, Asta. Yep, that appears in it, yep. Yeah. That's one of the top thirteen Illuminati families. And then uh Bloomberg, I think Bloom uh former mayor Bloomberg, his name is mm. on that list. And you know, we were speculating that the reason why or one of the reasons why they uh donated so heavy to the cause of the museum was to keep was to push this lie. this lie and to push the idea of so called white supremacy. You know, that the so called white man is supreme to all the other races. Yeah, that was his job when he came exactly back into power during the Renaissance. That's right. And that's one of the reasons why this uh, lady of a noble family why her nose was chipped because one of the ways you can tell what uh, what kind of uh, ancestry a person has is by certain features mm -hmm. on their face like concerning the so called negro they'll have big lips or a big wide nose, nose yep. wide nose, mm -hmm. flared nose if you will and that's one of the reasons why her nose was chipped you know so um go to the next slide here now we came into a section now in the museum there's different sections in the museum it's sectioned off like you have your Egypt, Egypt section you got your um, the Byzantine section which you're looking at here uh, Assyrian section Assyrian section which we have this uh, we have a few slides in this uh, presentation from the Assyrian section now in this Byzantine section of the museum there was a series of plates I believe well according to Wikipedia it was a uh, um, nine plates and they're known as the David plates because they're supposed to be plates that depict uh, a moment or moments in the life of King David now these plates were all on silver or the depictions were all on silver and I'll just read this here from Wikipedia. It says, The David Plates are a collection of nine corresponding silver pieces stamped between 613 and 630 created in Constantinople, which Constantinople today is known as what? Turkey, correct? Mm -hmm. Each depicting... <coughs> excuse me. Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Each depicting a scene from the life of the Hebrew King David. These luxurious or these luxury pieces are considered an important part of Byzantine art. Hence the reason why they were located in the section of the museum called the Byzantine Room. Uh, important part of Byzantine art produced after the rule of Justinian and before the first Byzantine iconoclasm. Right. So I don't know if you want to yeah, you know, the, the word iconoclasm means the defacing of the images. The word icon is Greek for image, and clasm is Greek for defacing. So this was the first Byzantine iconoclasm, or or this was the first uh, um, show in, in that in that process of, of the destruction of the images that were uh, in in uh, the Byzantine Empire prior to Esau coming into power. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it was just it was just in other words, when you look at the plate, you can see that those people are people of color. You know, they have the woolly hair, they have the, you know, the, the features of, of, of Israel, Jake features. And this was just before they started the destruction of uh, the uh, actual true images of, of Israel that were depicted on all those different pictures and statues and frescoes and so on and so forth. Yeah, like the center, I believe this is supposed to be... Um uh, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel the, the prophet, or oh, oh, because he's supposed. To, this is supposed to be David, I believe. Right. Yep. Yep. And uh, I mean, they they have they, they. I mean, you could go either way with them. They're not. The images are not straight up to me, at least. They're not straight up, so-called Negroid. Case in point, these two individuals right here. <laughs> As you, you can see, right at the end, yeah, at, at the end they they can't, they have. So, sort of a renaissance look to them mm -hmm. you know but um, um, according to the information found on Wikipedia the, the plates were found 
well, it says the plates here were discovered in 1902, but they came out of, uh, in uh, Cyprus, Northern Cyprus, but they came out of uh, an era around 613 to 630. Now we know around that time we were ruling as a, you know, as a, as, as a people. And that around that time, it was pretty much the so-called white man. They, they were in slavery, you know, around that time underneath us what we call the Dark Ages. So, again, the David plates were supposed to depict uh, King David. Go to the next slide. The same, this is a, another... Coronation of King David. Right. Anointed. David being anointed. Now, in this picture, you, especially this individual here, he clearly, clearly has a look of a, of a so-called Negro. Right. All right? This individual here, even this individual, they don't look like, you know, the images don't look, in this plate at least, they don't look like, you know, straight up, you know, so-called white people. They have this woolly hair, Negroid look to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to comment on this. Yeah, well, hair. basically, like you said, there was, this is pre, pre uh, iconoclasm. you know, this is just before Esau came up in there and started, um, destroying the images that were there, the real images of, of, of the people that really ruled uh, Europe, mm -hmm. pretty much. Go to the next slide. There you go. Oh, look at this. Look at this individual here. Mm -hmm. And this individual here. Okay. This individual. I guess the first plate, especially the two on the end, they had like an Edomitish <laughs> look to them. Yeah. But in, come on, brothers. You're looking at the plate now. In this plate, you can s clearly see the, 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 you know, these were jakes, yep. you know. And where is this found? In the in the museum, uh, the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. Yep. And them devils know that those that the people that that were portrayed uh, during the Byzantine Empire were so-called Negroes, because they have other uh, uh, slides of us that's going to be you're going to see of actual pictures. There were actual uh, documents, you know, of, uh, of um, knights, you know, that were riding on, on the on the horses and, and, and uh, in those different chariot races or whatever they had back then. Tournaments, yeah. Tournaments, and they yeah. picked, you know, more, you know, Moorish uh, traits. Moorish know, heads. Moorish heads. Which, which were Israelites. Yeah, which we're going to cross to that. Yeah. <laughs> His brother's moving a little head ahead, <laughs> but that's it's all good it's, as long as it's all in edification. Um, is the next plate or well, the next slide? I should say, oh, look at that, brother. Come on, yep. look at come on. And uh, you know what? In the post production, I'll see if I can get a closer zoom on these images, but there's no doubt, okay? There's no doubt, man. This is supposed to be uh, David, King David in battle. Silver, like I said, it's a collection of plates. As you can see, the other plates back here, uh, numbering about nine of them. They're the museum call them the David plates. All right, so there you go. All right, the next now, this is what Elder Apostle Ramla was talking about the tournament. What you're looking at here is an aerial shot of the tournament room, which is another section of the museum. And this is the section where we saw this actual book, which is on display. It's called the Tournament Album Book. And this shot here, this this picture here, I took on my phone of the, you know, the the Moorish heads riding on horses, taking part in a jousting or in a medieval tournaments. Okay, and uh, as you can see, just like. Uh, um, Elder Ramlab mentioned you can see that they have the Moorish heads now I wasn't able to you know I was trying to position my uh, phone to take the full pic picture but I wasn't able to so this head is cut off here but you can clearly see and I put an arrow here to show you of a, a Moorish head on on the you know on the horse I don't know if you want to well that book is still on display there that was an actual book back from that time period that's right. You know, where they actually drew, because back then they didn't take pictures, they didn't have cameras, so they actually drew, you know, the uh, coats of arms and the horses and the 
knights and all that, and and the uh, coats of arms. These are those, those are actual coats of arms. Mm-hmm. You know, they drew what they saw on the coats of arms. Yeah, and that book, that that tournament album book, is on display, like you said, in these cases here. Yep, you can't, but you can't reach in there. You can't reach in there. You can't turn the page or anything like that. Hell, they own certain artifacts in the museum. They don't want you to even breathe on them. So much as as, as uh, touch them, they they usually have um, the guards standing right there, yep. and the guards are looking at you, yep. especially if Jake go up in there. The you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Usually, if the crackers go up in there, they'll have no problem with, with the crackers up yep. in there. But if Jake were to go up in there, they, they yeah, they get the, the they get the hard looks from the guards, and they they get those side looks, you know. Yeah, they follow you around. Yeah, they follow you around because in their minds, Jake ain't supposed to be there. Yep. And why is that? Because somehow Jake might stumble upon the, upon upon the truth. But there you go. That that tournament book. You see those glass uh, uh, Casings. casings there. That tournament. One of those glass casings contains this tournament book here. And on display is the Moorish heads. Now the Moorish heads were what? They were Israelites. They were Israelites that call themselves Moors. And what I did was I took a picture. If you Google a Moorish head, this is the image. You, you'll see this image here. Okay, this image right here, and also uh, you'll see another image. This is supposed to be the flag of Sardinia, which is located in Italy. Now, um, I believe you had some information you found. Yeah, there was, uh, I believe, it was the Emperor Claudius, if I'm not mistaken. He conscripted four thousand uh, Jewish soldiers to the island of Sardinia. You know, and that was just the ones that were forcibly put there. You know, there were others that went there voluntarily, but that was, those are the ones that were forcibly sent there. So you know that when they went there, they were having uh, sex, you know, with the women of that island. You know, so pretty much, you know, they, the, that island of Sardinia, a, a good vast majority of them are, are Israelites, just like, like Sicily. Mm-hmm. You know, so pretty much, you know, there's a vast history and these soldiers, uh, a lot of times, in certain aspects, the soldiers that were sent out from the Roman Empire weren't acknowledged as being Jews because they had uh, Latin and, and uh, Greek names. You know, so that's why most people don't know the extent of of, of the uh, of the uh, Jews in, in uh, Caesar's military. Like the like the Jew that helped, uh, um, what's his name, Titus, uh, Titus yep. take uh, down Jerusalem, yep. uh, which was uh, Tiberius Alexander. There you go. You know, yeah. because uh, um, Titus, even though he was a general, but he was just a general in name. Mm-hmm. He was very, he wasn't, um, he wasn't experienced in, in war, in warfare, and the takedown or the warfare that was going on in Jerusalem. So Tiberius Alexander, which was a, a, a Jew, so-called Negro, he was the one that was chosen by Vespasian to go up into Jerusalem and to actually put down the rebellion of Israel in, in that in that area because he was experienced. He's a he was a very experienced uh, general in war, in so war. he knew exactly what to do. But who got all the credit? The, the, the hockey, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but there you go, brothers. You know, um, as you can see, the flag of Sardinia. What they got on there, Jake's. Yep. How you get a white man out of that? How you get a, a Edomite out of that? Yeah. Pretty much like the scriptures say uh, in uh, the book of Job 13 and 4, it says, uh, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. Mm-hmm. And pretty much that was the, the gift that was given to this devil. He's pretty much a, a low life, lying, conniving devil. But every now and then, that the truth Come comes out. Yep. And that's where we come in, brothers. That's our job to uh, bring out the truth. Like it says in the book of John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. All right? So you got to stop looking at yourself, uh, we're just niggas. Hey, this is history right in your face. All right? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Renaissance art. <laughs> you crack it up back there. Renaissance art. Now, this was in the section, the Renaissance section of the museum now the word renaissance literally means rebirth yep. re means back and in the sense means birth yep. and the birth of what so called white men or the edomites coming back up into power 
That's it. Which what the first thing they did was was destroy all the images of of Jake that were all throughout Europe and put themselves up as the people that ruled that region. Oh, and that reminds me of the book of Job nine and twenty four. Mm-hmm. Which says, um, well I'll let you read it, Job nine and twenty four as we look at the image here. Basically, according to the so-called white man, Adam looked like this when he was created. And I have a scripture after we read Job 9 and 24. I have a scripture posted here, Genesis 2 and 7, which destroys this image here. Okay, but I'll allow you to read though. Uh, Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. This is an example of covering the face of of the judges by putting up his face mm-hmm. all right and the main well, well the main judges the one the world calls jesus christ which his name is yahweh shai they've covered his face mm-hmm. with caesar boger but was not adam one of those judges yeah yeah so there you go he covered up the face go ahead if not where and who is he yeah so he's the devil man and th- this is the work or works that show that he's the devil yeah. in other words renaissance art is an example of the works of the devil. That was the beginning of the deception of the whole world. That's right. Now the scripture is Genesis 2 and 7, which says, And the Lord power formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now the, the important point there to mention is the dust of the ground. Mm-hmm. Now the dust of the ground, the deep dark soil, of the ground which is where the richest life comes from is what just that deep dark yep. deep dark brown so how do you get a character like this out of there you, you don't. don't that's right all right and i uh, made note that the benefactors wall this is one of the reasons why you had so many names which majority of those names were edomites mm-hmm. that donated that were benefactors to that museum to keep pushing that lie after all, we're in the year of the push. The push, the push. <laughs> the, hey, those crackers, they were pushing, man. When they came into power yep. in the Renaissance uh, uh, era, they were pushing. Yep. But anyway, the, the benefactors, like I was saying, the benefactors, that was their job. Or the reason why they they gave to, um, the reason why they gave such large monies to yep. the museum was to help keep the lie going. Keep the lie of what? White supremacy. And you're seeing an example of white supremacy here with uh, Adam, uh, you know, with the, this character being uh, labeled Adam. Yeah, they're not going to give you the true image of Adam. They, when, when it's Esau that, that's uh, putting the money up together for these uh, different artifacts. Exactly. And, and like you see down here, forges of lies. There's an example. Forgery. Lies. Let's go to the next slide here. Yep, another example. And we're making jokes when we... <laughs> We took this picture at the museum. We, uh, I believe Elder Apostle Taz said, "This is supposed to be an angel." Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the this is the the uh, image right here. Another example of so-called white supremacy. Yeah. You know, and then, and then the female angel at that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever read in the scriptures. And matter of fact, I know I've never read in the scriptures about female angels. Okay, okay? which is blasphemy. Quick yep, go ahead. This is um, Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out. Yeah, his prison was slavery, like we mentioned um, uh, during the Dark Ages. There were slaves underneath us, underneath the Israelites. Mm-hmm. That was his prison. Go ahead. And shall go out to deceive the nations. Yeah, this is, this is a example of their deception yep. and that's why the majority of people on the planet earth really believe adam was a white man and the angels are white mm-hmm. go ahead and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth gog and magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sands of the sea yeah and that's going into future prophecy of russia gog represents russia yeah. future prophecy of russia coming back together as a, a, a force to be reckoned with, you know, a force that's going to come against America and Israel and destroy. and destroy them. But there you go, brothers. Yeah, when they came out of that, that, uh, that, that 
that a servant servant state, the first thing it did was lie to the world by destroying all the images of the real Israelites that were ruling throughout Europe and putting them up as white people. There you go. You know, and that's why a lot when you see a lot of those images uh, from the past, a lot of them the noses are broken off, and if they're paintings, you'll notice that the hair. It's real thick, real big, but then they, they painted it over like it was doggy stringy, but it's real heavy on top if you look at it. But then the uh, Renaissance pictures, the hair is flat on the head and, and doggy stringy. But yeah. the Renaissance, I mean, with the Byzantine pictures that they that they, that they uh, painted, painted over, over the, 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 the hair is real thick, but they try to paint it like it's a, if it was stringy. Like it looks matted, you're right. saying? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. If yeah. you look at them pictures, you you could see it. You yeah. Know, prior to the fourteen uh, hundreds. Like this is straight up uh, <clears throat> Renaissance art. Yep. Straight up. Why didn't they right. break the nose off of that? Right. Yeah. Because it's straight up Renaissance art. I have the scripture down here, Ezekiel one and seven. It says, which is speaking about the angels, when uh, Ezekiel the prophet saw the angels, the mm -hmm. angels came to them. It says, and their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled. This is talking about the angels, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass, which is burnt brass. Which is burnt brass. So how do you get a bur a burnt brass out of this image here? Right. Burnt brass would be very, very dark. Yep. That's a honky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we can move on. Nothing but a honky. Now, in the next slide, there's more Renaissance art. Again, the, the, the famous mother and child. That's another thing that the uh, Renaissance of Esau was known to push. That push, it, push, push. Yeah, push, push, push. That image of the, the mother and child. Look at the baby, got that pointy nose. Yeah, this is, the, 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 there's no, why isn't the nose broken off on this image? Because this is pure Renaissance art. This is pure. What's that? That came later. Yeah, that came later. This is pure uh, white supremacy, man. To push the idea that Mary was a so-called white woman, mm -hmm. and the, the the baby Jesus <laughs> was a so-called white baby. <clears throat> now, this again, this is in the Renaissance section uh, of the museum. Of the museum, Renaissance art. And you know, most Jakes don't even ask what does the name Renaissance mean. Right. You know, if you ask that question, then you'd begin to you'd begin to walk on the journey of the tr of uh, truth, getting to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And on this on this side here, the left side is uh, supposed to be Saint James the Greater. Okay, because you had uh, among the apostles, you had James the Great Lesser. and James the Less. Yeah. Right. So. Um, this is supposed to be James the Great. I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yeah, well, if you look at his face, you can see that his nose is all is totally destroyed, totally gone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. I wish I could have got a better picture, but there was two images, if I recall. Yep. There, there was, was one, one right next to it. Yep, but that one was a straight up Renaissance. Yep. Yeah, straight up, <laughs> straight up honky, yep. straight up honky. But this one was supposed to be, or was supposed to represent Jake. Like and I said, they both, they both said James the Greater on it. Mm -hmm. This one, if you really look at it, you can see it. I mean, you can see it from here. You can see the nose is completely broken off. Oh yeah, you can see that. I mean, the facial features are all pretty much destroyed. Yeah, yeah. You know, the only thing that that resembles uh, Jake is the beard. Mm -hmm. You know, but then when you look at the other image, which they have in there, which I mean, I'm pretty sure if you type in on on uh, images on Google, uh, James the Greater at the Metropolitan Museum. Of York, you might get the other picture. Yeah, it should come up. Should come up, definitely. And you can see the difference. Yep, night, night and day, brothers. Yep. Night and day. That's why you got to go to places like the museum. Yep. Now the next slide is um supposed to be Moses or yep. a depiction of Moses. As you can see, man, clearly a so-called black man. Yep. You can't get around that. I mean, look again. Look at the facial features. Again, you'll notice. The nose is, is uh, chopped off. Completely. All right, hacked off. Um, you can see that the, the uh, uh, Negroid features. Got the, braids. got the yeah. Got the eyes. Yep. Cheek, cheekbone. That's right. The beard, the woolly beard. Yep. 
and uh, down here, it, yeah, he's got the law in his hands, which represents that's how you know, you, you know, Moses was known as the the lawgiver of the nation of Israel. And um, I think on the plaque, what caught my eye was the Latin phrase "lex animata." And uh, if you want, uh, 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 it's pretty much lex is law, animata is, is life, you know, or alive or soul, which is given. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much, you know, pretty much it. The law giver. The law giver. Because the law is what brings life. Exactly. That's right. And this picture was taken, you know, my phone, I, on my phone, and you can see it's clear. Clearly shows the so-called black man, Moses. Yep. Next slide. All right. Now we cross over into the Syrian, the Syrian section, and um, this was, slide was, uh, or this picture was taken from the wall in the museum of the Assyrian section they had this large map I don't know if you you, yep. you remember right right and now uh, we were all looking at you know beginning of Elder Pasatar we were all looking at the at the map and and uh, you know getting into it you know pretty much it de uh, depicts locations of different empires that ruled during the Assyrian Assyrian and then Assyrian Babylon or Assyrian Babylon Empire. or Babylonian Empire. <clears throat> it gives you different um, um, ancient uh, um, locations, mm -hmm. you know, which, which, you know, what really is, is approximate locations, you know, because they really can't say for sure exactly, you know, where to, to pinpoint the exact place, but this is a, a good depiction because this area, which is so-called scholars call the... Um, Fertile Crescent. Fertile Crescent. That's right. where civilization started regrowing back again after the flood. I think that's one of the reasons why they had that giant map there, besides it, it being part of the Assyrian Empire. Kind of. <clears throat> but um, like like um, Apostle Ramlab said, you know, um, it's a very uh, a very important area. Yeah. Okay, a lot of history. Yep. Yep. Uh, now, what I did was I put some arrows of certain cities that play a uh, important part in the history of um, Israel. Like as you see Ur, mm -hmm. it was uh, from Ur of the Chaldees where um, you know Abraham uh, came from. Right. Yeah. And um, then I put uh, arrow for Babylon. Yeah. You know the Babylonian Empire, we were in captivity in the Babylonian Empire for what, 66? Almost 67 years. Mm -hmm. And then Nineveh, what should come to mind when you hear Nineveh, Jonah, should come to mind. Jonah, which is the Assyrian Empire. Which is the Assyrian Empire, and also uh, Tobit. Tobit, yeah. Which Tobit, Jonah, Jonah had prophesied that Nineveh would go down, but if they repented, and they did repent, so Nineveh wasn't destroyed at that time, but later, yeah. during the time of, uh, uh, the, but later. Later on. Yeah, later on. Uh, destroyed. Nineveh was destroyed. Yep. Okay, so the Lord said it was going to be destroyed, so He destroyed it eventually. Mm -hmm. So you know, these were points of interest concerning this map. You know, cities of uh, interest pursuant to uh, Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, uh, a lot of great prophecies came out during the time of the Assyrian Empire. You had, uh, great prophets like, uh, um, I yeah, believe. Yeah, Haggai, I believe. Uh, uh, Nehemiah, I think, was in there. Uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, definitely. Yep. Isaiah. Isaiah. Jeremiah. Yeah, because you had great kings that uh, were terrible kings during the, the Syrian Empire. Sargon and Shalmanazar and Tiglath Pileser and Ashurban Nippal and, and uh, individuals such as those. And those were cruel kings mm -hmm. that wreaked havoc in Israel back in those days. And some of those prophecies of what those kings was going to do to Israel is still rec is recorded today in, in, the, in the book of Isaiah, like you mentioned, Ezekiel, yep, yep. you know. So moving on to the next slide. Now, this is of particular interest because this is the same Assyrian section, but there's in one of those uh, plaques, if you will, on, that was uh, on display, they had uh, something called uh, wedge writing. All right, uh, which is also known as cuneiform. Mm -hmm. 
which cuneiform, when you look it up, means wedge writing. This is where a certain tool was used to, to chisel in words, which essentially meant something. Right. All right, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, no, that was actually before the... You know, I mean, according to, to the history, actually before things are written down on paper, or, or papyrus or papyrus, however you want to call it, you know, they used to write it in stone. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord wrote, the commandments on stone, but you also had scrolls. Because in Israel, Israel, you had something called the House of Scrolls, which is where you kept all the writings, you know, beginning with the law and the different writings, or whether it was genealogies or history or whatever. So they used to be kept in scrolls, you know, so they actually wrote it down on paper. But before that, it was etched, etched in the walls. Uh, during the Egyptian Empire, they, it was uh, pictorial, you know, which was uh, pictures uh, that conveyed the, the language at the time. Uh, at this, this particular time, there were the Assyrians and different empires that had cuneiform writing, you know. But it was pretty much all the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, as I was looking at this picture, this is supposed to represent a, a Syrian king, and what is he doing? He's pretty much worshiping the sun, mm -hmm. sun worship. That was the main thing he worshiped. Yeah, you can see the rays emanating from this uh, image here, and on top it looks to be an eye with some illuminating rays coming out of it. But we know that the Assyrians, and not just the Assyrians, all the other nations outside the nation of Israel, were they they were they worship the, their gods were gods of idols, mm -hmm. you know like the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. constellations, constellation, and that's the book of Psalms, the ninety sixth chapter, the fifth verse. It says, "For the, the gods of all the nations are what are idols," and the Assyrians were no exception. Okay. All right, so more from the Assyrian section. This is also known as the the griffin and um, I have the scripture here Daniel the seventh chapter where it says this the fourth verse the first was like a lion and had eagles wings all right so here's the example a lion the body of a lion with the wings of what an eagle okay which is like um, uh, Apostle Ramab said is a griffin and this is supposed to represent the first king of the uh, Syrian, you know, Assyrian empire. empire. This was the main symbol of the Assyrian Empire. All right, the, the lion with the eagle's wings, and just like it's recorded in scripture, the first was a, like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings there, thereof were plucked, and it was lift lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it because at first you had this image which represent the Assyrian Babylonian Empire mm -hmm. then uh, dovetail or meshed into what the straight up Babylonian Empire yep, yep. yeah because that was the beginning of, of, of that of the, the beast that uh, Daniel saw mm -hmm. you know from that from the Assyrian Empire all the way to America those are all the empires that that Daniel saw, even though he didn't understand it at the time, and that was the, pretty much the the um, rule that the Lord has set up from that point until now. You know, the ending of that vision was was America. You know, that That's was right. the last empire or the last beast or the last part of the fourth beast. So that's why that image was um, that image uh, was on display at the museum yep. because it's a part of. Bible history. It's part of biblical history. So, uh, like I said, when we went to the museum, you had these different sections. And uh, some of those sections, they actually told the truth. Like when you mentioned about the, the tournament room, as you see here. That's just an example. But, um, there you have it. And that's the end. That's the end of the slideshow. So, um, again, this is, uh, this is uh, Apostles of GMS, or Apostles Elders of GMS, at the Metropolitan Museum, uh, New York City. And I hope you enjoyed the slideshow presentation. And uh, we 
and see you in the next episode of the Apostles and Elders of GMS. Shalom.